Next up is Ibrahim Boucheri, um, CEO and founder of Lime Microsystems. Uh, we have been working with uh, Lime for years now. Uh, I finally get to see you in person. Uh, so I had to hold an international conference to, to pull you in. But uh, they've been doing all sorts of interesting projects. You know, the original Lime SDR, Lime SDR Mini, LimeNet, LimeNet Micro. Uh, and there's a few more that you're going to announce today. But um, I'll let you take it away. Excellent. First of all, Josh, thank you very much for inviting us. I think it's quite exciting to be here and looking at all these projects that have been launched within Crowd Supply. <coughs> but before I uh, give an introduction about what we do, uh, how many people are here are familiar with software defined radio? And then, no oh, excellent. So basically, you're in good shape. Um, so basically, what I'd like to cover in my presentation is uh, really just to give you a bit of an overview of Lime, uh, specifically, in, specifically in the context of what we've done with Crowd Supply, because that has been a huge success uh, in getting our technology out there and getting people to use it. Uh, so uh, literally, I want to touch on the technology itself. What is it that we... Um, manufacture and provide. And indeed, uh, look at some of the uh, products and applications that came out of this technology uh, and made available to practically everybody. We are a huge fan of open source, so whatever my company does, we open source and we make available to everybody. And I think that's one of the key factors that any semiconductor company such as ours, especially startups, should bear in mind because that's going to be huge for anybody that wants to get their technology out there and get it used. So I'll really highlight some of those aspects and finish off with a summary of important points. And we are going to be soon launching another campaign with Crowd Supply, which is essentially a product. Uh, uh, I'll highlight that uh, at the end of my presentation. So I won't spend much time on this slide. I've uh, borrowed this from one of my colleagues who gave a, gave a presentation here last year. Uh, really, uh, when you look at the type of air interfaces and the type of wireless connectivities are out there, uh, there are really numerous um, air interfaces that we cater for today. Uh, you know, if you look at cellular, uh, just as an example, We've gone from 2G to 3G, from 3G to 4G. Now we are talking about 5G. My company is already working on 6G technology. So essentially, all of these work on different frequencies, different standards. And you add all these other things that uh, are around us, from narrowband Bluetooth to Wi-Fi, um, GPS signals. So we are kind of surrounded by all these different uh, wireless signals, all, all these radios, and basically we think that it's time to make radio software defined. So we should be able to reach a point where by software we tune to these different air interfaces and standards. So if you look at your phone today, it's a f the in it there's a farmyard of radios catering for quite a lot of these standards. So it's getting really complex, uh, especially when it comes to the networks that are going to support all the communications that we do today. So that's the basis by which I think software defined radio uh, is hugely important and future systems and networks are going to be hugely reliant on software defined radio. You can't build systems efficiently anymore if you have to put multiple radio technologies inside the same box. You can maybe do two, three, five, ten, but we are going well beyond 10 and 20 air interfaces that needs to be incorporated inside our networks. So essentially, this is the reason we think software defined radio is of huge importance. But uh, today, any radio that we deal with is based on proprietary hardware, controlled, designed, implemented, 
and manufactured by very few suppliers. So what we want to do is to base these uh, implementations uh, on generally available hardware. So whatever my company does uses FPGAs and general purpose processors alongside a software defined radio chip that we manufacture and we provide solutions that can be supplied and indeed uh, provided to a wider community so anybody can make use of these. Using this type of commodity hardware means that essentially we're going to bring down the cost of ownership. Today everybody has a laptop so if we provide a software defined radio that plugs into a laptop means that you essentially can do different air interfaces, different network solutions based on these platforms that are really low cost and generally available. So literally it means that uh, by bringing the cost of ownership, if you uh, look what happened to the world of computing from 80s to now, how much cost reduction has been made, is really based on the same principle that we think by uh, providing software defined radio in the same manner, we could go through the same process in our wireless networks. And obviously, as I mentioned, by open sourcing our designs, we can bring a lot more people into this game and enabling them to innovate around wireless technology. So today, if you look at cellular, essentially the equipment is supplied by very few suppliers and indeed rolled out by few uh, essentially organizations. By opening this up, anybody can set up a network. And I'll highlight that in the announcement that I would like to make around the product that we'll be launching soon. But alongside all of this, what made computing so successful was applications. So we are going to be enabling a lot of applications to run on top and enabling anybody to write an application on top of the networks that could be deployed based on software defined radio. So let me just take you uh, a little bit into the history of what we saw happening in the world of computing. If you look at the top part of my presentation, back in 1950s, we were reliant on supercomputers. Very few people had access to it. By 1980s, we were looking at super, uh, personal computers being deployed. And since then, it's been an explosion of platforms, designs, and implementations that essentially ensured uh, a cost-optimized, very uh, small form factor computers that today are everywhere, including inside our watches, for example. In the world of wireless networks, we are reliant on macro base stations. Your phones gets connected to a large base station, much in the same way as we had supercomputers back in 1950s. In terms of wireless infrastructure, we, we are still in those kind of days. So we believe uh, the way the network should be deployed, we should be going from macro, much in the same way as computing did from supercomputers, to much smaller form factors, smaller networks that could be essentially programmed by software. So this is the very basis of our strategy, bringing computers into the networks, adding software-defined radio to it, so the total solution becomes programmable, and indeed becomes affordable and can be deployed at scale, much in the same way as deploy computers at scale. So it's a really big task. It really is not for the faint-hearted what we are trying to do. So as a result, uh, over the past few years, we've created strong partnerships with quite a lot of people to manufacture and supply these type of networks uh, and 
We are not alone in this mission. A uh, number of companies that are signing up to this idea are increasing to the point that um, even three years ago, uh, Altera, one of the FPGA suppliers, invested in Lime. Uh, they have now subsequently been bought by Intel. So we've got the backing of some large semiconductor companies alongside these guys that are helping us in this endeavor. I have to highlight crowd supply because really a method by which we can supply our technology, get feedback from the community for the usefulness of the designs that we are putting out there, crowd supply plays a very important role. And I'll highlight that a bit more in my presentation. But essentially, uh, we think that the number of people, organizations that are backing this idea are increasing. So our confidence for the success of what we have set out to do is also increasing in that manner. So let me highlight the technology a bit more. <clears throat> uh, on the right-hand side, uh, you see the microchip technology, which is a radio technology, a transceiver function that is totally software-defined. So this is the chip that we make, we produce, and we provide to the market. It's a single chip solution that can cater for practically any standard. So this particular design uh, works from something like 10 megahertz up to 3.8 gigahertz. You can tune it to any frequency in that range, and you can apply any air interface from Bluetooth all the way to a 4G LTE function could be implemented here. Alongside that technology, we use Intel processors and Altera, in this case, FPGAs, so that the total solution that we offer is fully programmable. And these, um, uh, essentially, GPPs run Linux. We partnered with Ubuntu, which means anybody who can uh, write program for a Linux box could write a program that essentially engages a software-defined radio of this kind, and we could set up networks that can cater for any air interface. That's the mission. All of these chipsets, we can buy them in ones and twos. Anybody can buy them, including what we produce as Lime. So in the same way as you buy an FPGA, you can go out there and buy a Lime chip, a software-defined radio chip, you can take our reference designs, they're all open sourced, use them and modify them, or indeed buy them from various sources, predominantly crowd supply, and essentially do your projects with. So as a way of base technology, if you look at what we've done, uh, up to 10 gigahertz, we already have microchip technologies that are totally software programmable. Going forward, we are at a very advanced stage of design with what we call our millimeter wave chipsets. So essentially, we would be looking at a world whereby from a few kilohertz up to 100 gigahertz frequency, we are covering that whole spectrum with five microchips, three of which are responsible for taking the frequency from 20 gigahertz to 100 gigahertz. And we've already got chips in either production or engineering samples that takes us up to 10 gigahertz. So our mission is to really software define the entirety of the spectrum, enabling us to set up networks that can achieve really high data rates and also achieve full coverage. So this is a very base technology that enables us to provide products and applications, as I mentioned, supplied through crowd supply, that covers essentially any wireless application. So it could be 
a cellular network. We could turn your laptop together with a software defined radio to behave as a 4G network. You can take your standard phones, camp onto that uh, essentially laptop, and make calls. Something like this would have been unthinkable as far back as five years ago. Today, you're able to do this. IoT, that it's so now a buzzword for everybody, we have actual applications where software-defined radio is used in this context. We have customers that are using it. Media, digital signage, essentially transmitting large amounts of video signals wirelessly to displays or applications that people are using it for. And indeed, test and measurement. If you have a transceiver function that can be so versatile and cover a huge frequency range, it could be used as a spectrum analyzer or as a signal generator. So from test equipment all the way to final products that could define networks, could be essentially designed and implemented using commodity hardware, a software defined radio and essentially your computers. So in this context, what was uh, very refreshing is we decided to open source the radio. You see these boards. Um, run them as campaigns on crowd supply and get feedback from the community. So for the duration of those campaigns, we were getting a lot of feedback from people. Uh, come, they, were, they were coming up with their applications, ideas, and we kind of matured these platforms so that they had the widest applications for a lot of people to use. So we started with that board called Lime SDR on the left. That got about 6,000 um, essentially orders. And I think the order during the campaign even went up to about a million dollars. Uh, something that was kind of unthinkable. This is a complicated product, difficult to use, and not many people actually have experience of using software defined radio. Nevertheless, um, it was one of the large type of uh, campaigns that uh, Crowd Supply did uh, back in 2016. What was very important was, uh, I don't know if you're aware of EE, uh, is part of British Telecom. They're a large operator in UK, and they decided to back the campaign because they felt that software-defined radio could impact the cost and the deployment of 4G networks that they were focusing on, and this would then open up the game to lots of suppliers ultimately that can supply networks to the likes of EE. What was interesting, on the back of that campaign, a European Space Agency came to us and said, guys, we are really interested in software defined radio. There are a whole bunch of satellite applications we, we want to go after. Could you make it lower cost? So we came up with Lime SDR Mini, and guess what? They immediately backed the campaign, and that was also a very successful outcome, and 4,000 uh, developers came along and bought these boards. And then follow on from that, Vodafone came to us, that's another global operator, and said, could you incorporate this inside a box and provide a total solution so we can go out to developers and say, look, here is a complete solution. Let's turn this into an LTE network. So they decided to back the campaign. And every campaign that we started doing had one of these big, big names associated with it. But most important aspect of this was we were open sourcing these boards, these implementations. And our focus was very much around the developer community and the open source community. 
And then recently we launched another campaign we call LimeNet Micro, essentially adding software defined radio to Raspberry Pi and <coughs> enabling lots of other applications to be implemented. This box actually provides, could provide you with a GSM, a 2G network. You can download the software, set it up as a 2G network, camp your phone onto the network, and start making calls. Totally open source, the software as, as well as the hardware. We even partnered with Pantacore to enable us to distribute these, update the software remotely, so those who are not technic technically savvy could essentially get upgrades, updates, without having to do very much. So we are trying to make this whole experience kind of plug and play. So you will get some more um, updates on this. This can be used even as a scanner. So we are working on a project that enables people to scan a spectrum, uh, get information about the uh, essentially platforms, implementations that are transmitting around this uh, LimeNet Micro, capture that data, assess the quality of coverage, assess the quality of the signals that there are around you, and plot them on a Google map. So you've got a location, and you have the spectrum map of what is being transmitted in that location. So all of this, all of these hardware platforms are steadily coming to life because of all the applications we are able to put around it. To the extent that we've um, essentially partnered with uh, Ubuntu, as I said, our means of distribution comes from Pantacore, but there will be an app store, you get the hardware, you go to the app store, you decide what applications you want to run on your network. Let's say you want to turn your Lime SDR into a LTE network. There will be an LTE app you download onto, the, onto your computer with a Lime SDR and you've got yourself a 4G network that you can experiment with. It's fully open. You can write applications on top and do all manners of experimentation. This is not possible today because we are still at an age whereby we are reliant on a macro base station, much in the same way as in the 50s, we were reliant on supercomputers. Software defined radio and general purpose processors are changing that, uh, that aspect. So let me finish off with some, imp some summary of important points. We believe making the radio field programmable, making the radio software defined, and making it generally available means that we could initiate a paradigm shift in the way that wireless networks will be de deployed in the future. We really believe that anybody anywhere in the world should be able to take commodity hardware with a software-defined radio and define any network they wish at will at any time. And we really do see this happening. I mean, what is on crowd supply today with some 10,000 developers that are getting behind this over the course of two years, that's a huge progress. I mean, Lime has been around for almost 12 years and up to that point, we managed to get about 200 customers. From 2016, in the space of two years, we grew that to up to 10,000. So really, it demonstrates that it is possible to democratize wireless innovation. Much in the same way as in the 80s, Linux came about and had really tough time, years of struggle 
by some people that got behind Linux. And it really grew when IBM came along and backed Linux. Look where we are with it. In the same way, we are promoting software-defined radio, a fully programmable network that is app-enabled, and getting those big names behind it, but more importantly, bringing this to the community, to the open source community that can essentially develop the type of applications which we think future, future networks could rely on. So I think this really sums up my presentation and the message I wanted to put across uh, today because I think this idea will grow even faster in the future. So on that basis, we thought what would be the be better venue than the crowd supply here today to actually announce a pre-launch of a product that could sit almost anywhere and provide a total coverage, what we call crowd cell. Sorry, this was one. And this crowd cell could then provide a total connectivity. Uh, it can connect to a macro base station. It can provide a complete network solution on any air interface. Predominantly, we are working on 4G, but upgradable to 5G and beyond and indeed enable you to deploy this to improve coverage, but that's only part of the story. We are making these app enabled. Inside every one of these boxes is a software defined radio with general purpose processors running Linux, which means we can add lots of applications on top. So this app enabled mobile edge compute could become reality in an open source software defined way. So we've been working on this project for almost two years in the background. So all these campaigns that we've been doing is really all aimed at creating the community that know and understand software defined radio. So within this box that we've design, been designing, and by the way, this design has been sponsored by Vodafone. So they, they're really backing this idea. So within, within it, we have a software-defined radio. We have a power amplifier module to give us range. We have a NOC PC, essentially a motherboard. And we have a UE that connects this, this, bo this box to a nearest macro base station. So you can install a SIM card inside this box and get connected to the macro and have internet access on one side, and on the other, on the other side is a complete network in a box. So essentially, you can define any network and program it to run any function you want. Through this uh, process, we will supply two versions of this, one which is looking more like a computer, a desktop box, albeit very small form factor, or indeed looks like a router that you could deploy and put it in the corner of an office and essentially providing you with connectivity, it being LTE, 4G, or indeed making it app enabled and run other applications on top. But essentially this is a software defined radio computer. So the beauty of this crowd cell, as far as the tier one operators are concerned, enabling them to extend the range of macro, and indeed provide services on top, and enable better coverage, and enable applications to be customized for the needs of the community that are using this type of networks. So if it's about an enterprise wanting to share content in a private way, and not having to offload that data onto a cloud server outside and they want to keep it internal, that's one use case. To a community in Africa who needs coverage and there is no coverage, this is a network in a box that can connect two villages together 
and applications can run on top that cater for the needs of that community. So we can really customize these by software. So the type of applications that will be offered as the time go by could be really centric around the needs of an operator such as Vodafone that requires 2G to 5G services, requires really 5G type of applications like service steering, like RAN slicing, quality of service based on the application, all the way to running virtual reality, um, detecting uh, uh, facial uh, detection, uh, spectrum monitoring, or indeed running augmented reality, all of that can be run on this box that essentially uses a software defined radio as a means of communication. So please be on the lookout for the campaign that is now pre-launched. You should be able to access it on the crowd supply page. And if you track it, uh, within the next few months, we will launch that campaign and we will be demoing all these applications you see here on that box as part of the updates that we're going to do. So without further ado, the final conclusion is this, that if we democratize software-defined radio, much in the same way as the world of computing has been democratized, the future of connectivity and the applications that we can run in our networks is going to be completely different to what it is today. And that concludes my talk.